Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Our show is brought to you by Viore. I have an unhealthy amount of joggers, but Viore's performance joggers take the cake as the softest, most comfortable pants that I can work out in, lounge in, or honestly go out in public in. Check out the description below for 20% off of your first purchase. On today's episode, we have Dex Hopkins and Brian Friend here to discuss how Danielle Brandon leaving Underdogs Athletics impacts her potential games performance. We really are just a few weeks away from the games. Uh, Dex, as a competitor yourself, how does losing your training camp and coach, potentially not having a coach at all while in Madison, affect an athlete physically and even emotionally? Kind of just depends on the kind of athlete you are. Um, if the camp is, hey, everybody's training at the same time, even if we have different programming or maybe everybody has a different kind of program and you come in, kind of trickle in as the day goes on and we all – operate under this umbrella and as the paths cross we're all supporting each other um you know it just depends on what the camp is but outside looking in and i you know know those people just kind of in passing at events and they're all very cool um you know very emotional cats and seem very emotionally attached and you know it's one of my favorite things to see kotler losing his mind at the at the finish line for everybody uh just across the board for everybody to have i mean matt uh you know everybody and so I can see it being this this emotional impact if that's how tied in everybody is. Um, but it just depends, you know. Maybe, maybe she goes in and works out at 6 a.m. alone in the dark and listens to angry music. I don't, I don't really know the details of that. So. <laughs> Brian, talking specifically about Danielle Brandon, I mean, she's somebody who, whether – you yourself as a sports analyst, I recently caught up with her coaches, um, Kotler and Kiefer, talking about how good she was looking this year, especially compared to last year when she had such a difficult season, losing her two training partners at the games, uh, being separated from the field because of a potential COVID spread. How does this um, maybe change the, the performance that she could potentially have at the games? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of an unfortunate situation because I think a lot of people are very excited for Danielle Brandon this year. <clears throat> you know, the situation that she had to deal with in the 2021 games is something that's going to be an extra stress in an already stressful environment for any athlete that has to undergo that. And, she, you know, she finished 11th last year at the games. It's a, it's a really good finish. Um, and I, But I just had this feeling that, that that was weighing on her, that was holding her back. And some workouts that I thought she would do really well, she didn't have the same execution or level of performance that I thought she could. And I thought, as, as many people do, that this year, having an extra year under her belt, hopefully having less distractions at the games this time around, coming off you know a, a semifinal performance that I think would boost her confidence. And outside of the lifting event, everything was in the top five. She had several event wins. It was really, really fun to watch her out there. Her energy was high and positive. And like Dex said, so was the energy about the people supporting her. So to know that she won't have that and that yet again this year, there's going to be something outside of the fitness that is having a, you know, an impact on her. It, there's no way around it. Like it is going to be a change. There's going to be a lot of things that are, you know, unexpectedly different leading into and during the games and what she probably shot, thought she would have available. And one of two things is probably going to happen. It's either going to have an effect on her mentally and she's not going to perform up to the caliber of that, that she might've been able to otherwise, or she'll rally from it and she'll find a way to use it as fuel. And if she's able to do that, then I think that that's a scary version of a Danielle Brandon. If she can mm. channel it into a positive. Mm. Dax, you look like you have something to say in that regard. <laughs> no, it's just well, I think she's that kind of killer though. Like uh, you know, we talked, me and Chase talked about it with with Cat and Sarah before the LCQ. But like last year, I mean, I we were there watching her get carted around by that lady who you know, and making the best of kind of a terrible situation. And she just like spitefully bawled. I mean, the skills in there, the capacities there, and all that stuff. But it looks like she was the type that takes those things and turns them into fuel. I mean, my, my favorite picture of the entire game season last year was her like Stone Cold Steve Austin flipping off the crowd after doing well in an event. And like knowing uh, Cooper manages her, like probably Cooper's favorite picture. Like that was, there's a lot of scenes like that. And it was out of spot. I mean, they had her in like a, like a pin in the back, man. Like, like Tommy Pickles is in and Rugrats, like just pinned up in the living room. And like, <laughs> It was she would go out there. No like, pen can hold Tommy Pickles. Yeah, you damn right. <laughs> no. And, and, and no, and that's the two for the no. And none pen. can hold Danielle Brandon. And that's what we're getting at. She she was out. Yeah, I mean, so she would come on the floor, like you know, the bull they pissed off before the bull ride, and like buck the whole weekend. And so that could be 
I can see it going that way. Like that's what the track record says is that, Hey, these things, you know, the tough curves are going to come. We're going to hit the gas anyway. And she, she did well. And I, I was at the, the event, uh, the semifinal and like, she looks good, man looks good like i i don't think any of those were max efforts and she was cruising uh and it looked like the closer the race was the better she did uh i mean there was one where she was behind a little i think was it was it brooke brian she was really close to brooke may have got a no rep on the the bag or something and then danielle just ran away from her like blood in the water i, I mean i talked to Kotler about it after he's like that was crazy and um <laughs> But that that's one of my favorite interactions to see, man, was those, you know, him and any athlete, but those two, I don't know if they're both just peaked out emotional people. And that was kind of the, you know, the thing, but that was, that's my favorite interactions to watch. So it'll be interesting, but I think the track record says she turns those things into gas. And so I'm excited mm -hmm. to see, like, I for sure think she could move up from 11th to the way she looked at a semifinal. Well, and that, that type of performance in a workout that you're talking about <clears throat> where she doesn't, you know, she, she executes her plan. She goes at the pace she needs to. She sees the people that are around her that she wants to beat, and she finds a way to reel them in at the end. That's the kind of next step of a, of a mature athlete that I was, you know, mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing more of at the games, and I'm hopeful that we'll still be able to. Mm -hmm. So do you think that having a coach there for you in between events, though, to um, whether the event goes really well or maybe an event that doesn't go go your way um changes the way that the rest of her weekend could go if she doesn't have that support system especially for somebody that has been so open about you know being the biggest cheerleader for any of his athletes yeah i mean seeing their relationship and, and i you know akin uh, it's kind of akin to seeing like cat and ben in the past right like we're getting talked up super close talkers after every event kind of unpacking everything's debriefing um, and, you know, they don't do that kind of close talk stuff. But, I mean, they were – he's on the fence yelling, you know, X, Y, Z, uh, pace stuff and, you know, stuff in the moment. And then after, they're celebrating and debriefing. And so I don't know how much how much of that is him or how much of that is need by her, you know, how much necessity that is for her. So uh, just – it really, man, it depends on, you know, who's who needs the crush to lean on. Like, do you need this emotional support from this person or is it just a perk you had and a guy who enjoys doing it? Um so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of always having someone there for you. You know, even if it's a small one day competition, like bring a friend, bring someone that can just make sure you're eating, getting food, that you have what you need. But in the case of the games, it's a different beast. There is a lot of, you know, onus that falls on the coaches or the managers or the caddy, as like Fraser and O'Keefe used to call it. Whoever that person is that's in your corner when you come off the floor, good, bad or otherwise, you know, to have the relationship with the athlete to understand when to approach them, when to give them space, what they'll respond to positively, what what won't go over well, even if you think it's the perfect thing to say, the timing matters, the way it's delivered matters. And when you develop, you know, that's why I think that, that there's value in having when you're when you're really talking about the elite level here and Danielle's trying to push towards the top five challenge for a podium type performance this year to have someone in your corner that that that, you know, has your best interests in mind and that, you know, knows how to talk to you or not talk to you when the moment's right or not right. That, that's a huge part of, of managing the whole, you know, totality of what the games week is about. Even though Kotler and her developed a great relationship, and I think that they would have had, a, you know, probably a good success in that regard. I do think she has some other people that she could potentially call on that could fill that role in, a, you know, in an at least an adequate way this year to make sure that she doesn't, you know, get too, too caught up in her head, get, you know, whether with the ups and the downs that are sure to happen at the games week. Um, it's, pro it's not an ideal situation, of course, but I, I think that there is a potential for someone to still fill into that role on her behalf and kind of steer the ship for her throughout the week to keep her, you know, in, a, in the right mindset to, so that she can do all the things that we know she has the capacity to do on the field of play. Yeah. Dex, what's your bottom line? What does this impact say of her leading underdogs athletics? She She's a pro, um, you know professionals are, are just that she's a professional so i think is it a bump cool yeah it's a bump in the road but i can see it it being compartmentalized and managed because she's had to do it before um you know granted walking through it with those people but she's been here before uh she obviously internalized it well and turned it into something that benefited her last year so this year it could be the same thing you just don't have to walk around with a mask by yourself you get to visit with people and stuff like that so it could be a happy mix brian what's your bottom line you know it's it's a less than ideal circumstance. It's something that's uh, you know probably unfortunate to see. I'm sure that, that no one involved really wanted this to happen at this time. But 
you know, like like Dex said, you know, now it's on her to find a way to to make it work because she's put in a ton of work this year to get herself physically ready to show, you know, the CrossFit world what her potential is. And I think that uh, I, I still I'm going to hold out hope and think that she'll find a way to get it, get the people in the right place and that we're still going to see a really fiery and exciting version of Danielle at the games. Yeah. All right. We'll wait and see. Brian and Dex, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time.